السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, the best news is Allah has given us an extra day. The reason I say it is usually there is the divine wisdom where Allah wants us to score a goal. You know, and it's a pity I have to give this example, but it's something that you will understand. Whenever we have not yet scored a goal in any sporting match, what happens at the end? They give you a little bit of extra time so that someone can win. You and I know that we have engaged in approximately 1,200 extra sujood in Ramadan. For those who actually have done the 20 units with 40 raka'a, with 40 sujood for every taraweeh, those who did 10, it's half of that. Those who did less than that, it's even less. But the idea here is the worship of Allah with great quality. So Allah decides, you know what, I'm going to give them an extra day. And he knew it all along. It was us who said 21 hour moon, 5 degrees from the horizon. And we've become, they're going to see it somewhere, whether it is local or regional. And the debate and every, Allah knew that, you know what, I'm going to give them an extra day and the topic is closed. So thank Allah and use this day wisely. Tonight, use it wisely. Do you know there is a huge difference between someone who passes away on a day like this and someone who passed away had the moon been sighted? Very big difference. One got Ramadan and one didn't get Ramadan. Well, one might argue, well, that's the night of Eid. Look, if you die when Allah is pleased with you, no matter when you die, you have succeeded. And if you die in the displeasure of Allah, even if you die in the holiest month, in the most blessed of days and the places, it's not necessarily a sign of the pleasure of Allah. So what do I need to do? Allah is giving me a few more hours to make peace with Him. That's what Allah is doing. A few more hours to make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ready to take it? MashaAllah. May Allah grant us ease. If you have a contract with some company that is expiring and they give you an extra little moment to say, no problem, we do a few more quick deals before we close down, you will be excited. You'll make sure in that extra time, you pack away as much business as you can so that you can quickly gain, right? This is Allah. I know there was excitement. I was excited too. Look, we are human at the end of the day. We wanted the Eid. And we were quite, you know, Looking forward to it with a lot of, what can I say? Enthusiasm, exactly. And I had a feeling, I told Brother Shiraz, I said, you know what? The world feels it's not going to be cited. I feel it's in the hands of Allah. It probably would be cited. The first part of my statement was right. The second part was wrong. <laughs> it's in the hands of Allah indeed. But it wasn't cited. And we are excited about it. We fulfill Salatul Taraweeh. We get up for Suhoor. We fulfill the fast. We will engage in an extra iftar with equal enthusiasm, if not even more. And the good thing is now you've got a bit of time to prepare for Eid. And another good thing is you've got the whole weekend ahead of you after that. So there is a lot of goodness. Allah has chosen and decided. Never be upset. Never think that, you know what, oh, uh, there's something wrong. They must have been there. You know, I'm sure tomorrow is not the day. Sometimes some people have that problem where they start thinking a little bit too much. Look, the moon wasn't sighted. It's over. We did taraweeh and that's it. We carry on. We enjoy the extra ibadah and we move on. Allahu Akbar. But tonight I want to share with you something of greater importance than that. Who was the most noble of all prophets of Allah? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was the greatest of creation? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did Allah choose for him? Prophethood. Not just any simple ordinary prophethood. Not to say that prophethood is ordinary, but not unlike the other prophets, he was chosen to be the final. He was chosen to be the highest in status and rank. He was chosen to come and bring a, 
revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would last until the end. He was chosen to be that of the last nation. And the last nation is us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him in so many ways, countless ways. Perfect. Allah created him in a way that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they comment about how when they looked at him, they really felt that there is nothing that Allah has created more beautiful than the face of the Prophet ﷺ. His face was like it was a piece of the moon. That's how it used to shine. May Allah grant us goodness. So what did he used to do? He looked at the people of Mecca and he saw them doing a lot of bad things. To word it lightly. And he started pondering over how unacceptable all of this was. And he started going to a cave known as Ghar Hira, which means the cave of Hira. And he used to meditate there, searching for solutions for what the people used to do. Lo and behold, a day came when Allah granted him more than what he was searching for. He was searching for the guidance. He got prophethood. He was always a prophet. From the very beginning, it was activated at the age of 40. And that's why Allah protected him from the very beginning. His birth had many miracles surrounding it. That was Rasulullah We get excited when we hear about him. We want to hear. We should hear. We should be getting excited. But it should not stop only at an excitement. We should continue to be true to that excitement by being proper followers of the Prophet Muhammad so there was a time when revelation had started. You know the first words that were revealed? We read them tonight in Taraweeh. Iqara bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. Amazing verses. Read in the name of your Lord who has created. And the Prophet Muhammad sallam came down to his wife Khadija radiallahu anha informed her and asked to be covered and hugged. Mashallah. A tight hug. Subhanallah. How many of us when we have uh, little, you know, issues, we go to our wives and give me a tight hug. I'm feeling a little bit, you know. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Men would look at it as a weakness. Never, ever. It's not. It's not a weakness. It's a good sign. Sign of strength. You need that comfort. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah speaks of the reason why He created spouses for us. And it's what? To achieve that comfort, that solace from one another. To achieve rahma and mercy and calmness. I hope that's happening in our homes, mashallah. Calmness, rahma. You enter the home and suddenly all the hustle bustle is over. And you look at the beautiful serenity in the house. MashaAllah. I see all the cackling happening here. Meaning here in Santon, it's the other way around. <laughs> Allah grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, inshaAllah, it's, it's good. Inshallah, we should work on it. That's it. But getting back to the point, there came a time when revelation stopped for a moment. It stopped for some time and the Prophet ﷺ got worried because on one hand, he, he was... Given revelation, it started and then suddenly it stopped. Now, when Allah has blessed you with anything and suddenly it stops, you need to be worried. You ought to be worried. Something you need to search within yourself. Is Allah upset with me? When something terrible happens in your life, you will talk to the scholars and your friends and those who know and those who have a bit of knowledge. What will they tell you? They'll tell you, don't worry, make sabr, it's okay, bear patience. It's just Allah testing you. You know what? They have to say that because of your frame of mind at the time. But in reality, it could well be a punishment of Allah. How do I know? Ask yourself, have I drifted away from Allah? If I have, it's a punishment. Sometimes it's the mercy of Allah because you're trying to be a good person and Allah tests you with more and more. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to become closer to Him. There is a test when something bad happens to you. In actual fact, there is a test how to look at it, how to know. Are you content with what Allah chose for you? If the answer is yes, it's not a punishment. It can never be a punishment. If you're not content with what Allah has chosen for you, even in what you might perceive as blessing, 
is the punishment of Allah. You are so uneasy. You want to break off your link with Allah. You're angry with Allah. You want to question Allah. Those are no-go areas for a true believer. Subhanallah. So at that juncture, the Prophet ﷺ was worried. He was thinking, is Allah upset with me? Has Allah forsaken me? Has He left me? What has happened here? So Allah revealed verses. We also read those verses here this evening. One of my favorite surahs of the Quran. Because Allah has reassured us. Ramadan is a month of reassurance. Where Allah is reassuring us to say, you did bad. Wipe it out in Ramadan. Start a new leaf. The moon is sighted for Eid. You won't go back to your bad ways. That's a sign of an accepted Ramadan. And if you have sighted the moon and immediately started your sins that you left off before Ramadan, you know what? It's a sign that there is a major disaster. Major disaster. What Ramadan was that? Salqawm la ya'budun Allaha illa fi Ramadan. What a bad nation who only worships, worships Allah during Ramadan. The same Allah is for Shawwal. So when you sight the moon, there's good news and bad news. You know that, isn't it? The good news is, eat. And the bad news is, shaitan is released. Shaitan is released. He comes and finds you exactly where he put you. <laughs> Subhanallah. He takes off from there. He says, hey, we were in quarantine. Don't worry, I'm back. <laughs> May Allah grant us goodness and protect us from shaitan. So, the good thing is Allah gives you a resetting of relationship. Work on your salah. We engaged, I said moments ago, 1,200 sujood, perhaps. Do you know what? Can't you do a little bit, one-tenth of it on an ordinary day? Subhanallah. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. My brothers and sisters, Allah responds to the Prophet ﷺ and his concern was addressed. And Allah starts off the surah, surah al-duha. Allah starts it off by taking a qasam, by swearing an oath. Coincidentally, the name of this masjid is Masjid al duha as well. Am I right? Yes. Two promises, oaths Allah is making. Allah is taking two qasams. What are they? By the daybreak and the night. The night when it is dark and the daybreak. Allah says, I swear by the daybreak and by the night in its darkness, Allah is swearing. Why? We are not allowed to swear by creatures of Allah. Man kana halifan falyahlif billah. Whoever wants to take an oath from amongst us, we can only take an oath in the name of Allah. We can't take an oath from the creatures or by the creatures of Allah. Only Allah can do that for certain reasons. And He is the Creator. In order to highlight something to us, perhaps the greatness of something, do you know when you are worried, at night you are worried even more than during the daytime. If you have stress, what happens? You can't sleep at night because you're thinking of the following morning. And in the morning, you can't eat properly because you're thinking of your worry. So Allah takes a qasam by the day and by the night. And then He says, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَالَ Straight answer to your concern, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah says, Allah has not forsaken you. He didn't leave you and he's not upset with you. So I want to stop there for a moment in your life and mine. Today we're facing this pandemic. We're facing the loss of lives. We're facing sickness. We're facing people who have not recovered properly. We're facing people who've lost jobs, people who've lost so much. We're facing so much of hardship, wars. Look at what's going on in Palestine. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah protect the holy sites. My brothers and sisters, these are times that are troubling. If you are steadfast, and if you are a person who's trying to earn the pleasure of Allah, remember, keep going. Allah has not forsaken you, nor is He angry with you and upset with you. If you are content with the condition Allah has you in, Allah is pleased with you by His will and mercy. Insha'Allah. Allah wants you to try. 
He knows you're a human. He knows you will falter. He knows you're not perfect. So all you need to do is keep trying. And keep trying until the day you die. You must try. Subhanallah. And seek forgiveness. I've said before, and I want to say it again. A point of comfort for me is Adam alayhi salam did exactly what Allah told him not to do. The only thing that he was told not to do, he did it. For me, that's a point of comfort. Why? Because then Allah forgave him. Allah forgave him. For us, there's not just one instruction not to do. The list of haram things is quite long. It's quite long. And Allah knows sometimes as a human, you might fall. Be strong. Get up. Repent. Regret. Turn to Allah. Allah will open your doors. Did you know, and I've been saying this in this month of Ramadan, when you do a bad deed, the angels don't write it instantly. They wait for a while. They are told to hold on. Perhaps this person will repent. Did you ever know that? Yes, it's a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ tells us when you are doing a good deed, you, it's already written just by your intention. And if you do it, it's multiplied. When you're planning to do a bad deed, nothing is written still. It was only a plan. When you don't do it, it's written as a good deed because you didn't do something bad that you were planning to do. And if you did it, Allah writes it against your name after giving you a period of time to repent. You have a few hours. The angels are instructed by Allah. Hold on, perhaps my worshipper is going to repent. That's why when you commit a sin and your heart feels the regret, it's a sign that you believe in Allah. Because if you didn't, there would be no accountability. Therefore, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. You'd be excited about sinning again. Why do you regret when you sin? Because you love Allah. What else? Because you're concerned about the accounts. What else? Why would you regret if you did something wrong? Because you really believe that this was wrong. That's why. And who made it wrong? Allah. May Allah protect us. So if you are heading in the right direction and you are trying your best with Allah, Allah will not forsake you, nor will He be upset with you. For me, it's a beautiful verse. Ma book. Your Lord has not forsaken you. Wa ma qala. Nor is He upset with you. Subhanallah. You need to know that your hereafter is going to be better for you than this life. All of us who believe. I had a young man come to me and ask me a similar question to what was asked at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when they asked him, Oh Messenger, are we not on the straight path? Yes, we are. Well, then why are we suffering? It's a good question, isn't it? Are we not on the straight path? Yes, we are. Well, then why are we suffering? Subhanallah. So the young man comes and says, you know what? We do salah, we do Ramadan, we do ibadah, we worship Allah, we try our best, we repent to Allah. Why are we struggling? Why are there struggles in our life? So I repeated the verse, Allah has created you to test you. Do people think that it's going to be enough for them to say we are believers and then they are not tested? Allah says we are going to test all of you just like we tested those before you in order to distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are liars. Liars in their belief, they lie. May Allah make us truthful. So Allah has to test you. So I told a young boy, I said, you know, you are tested by Allah. And Allah tells you what type of test he's going to test you with. He says, We will definitely, indeed, most definitely test every single one of you. That's what Allah said, Surah Al-Baqarah. With what? Five different matters. That's just a summary. Allah says, A little bit of fear, anxiety, stress. 
Well, jua, some hunger for whatever reason, be it medical, be it loss of, you know, sustenance, whatever else it may be. Wanaksim min al amwal, loss of wealth. You have to suffer a loss. You can't have a profit every day. Well, anfus, people have to die around you, your loved ones. Look at them, appreciate them while they are alive. They have to go, or you have to go before them, or you go together. May Allah unite us in Jannah with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With tamarat, Allah says, loss of produce. You have your business, you have whatever, it's all there, suddenly it's burnt. Or suddenly there's a flood and it's gone. Allah says, take it in your stride. Bashir. In times like those, give good news to a certain category of people. Who are they? Bashir. Bashir means give good news to. To who? As-sabirin. Those who are patient. Those who are patient. That's part of your test. Allah is giving you the questions He's going to ask you in your examination and He's telling you the answer. It's up to you to now put pen to paper and to live by it. So I told a young boy, I said, you go to school? He says, yes. I said, do they test you? Yes. Why? So that I can graduate to the next level. Simple. Does the college you go to ever stand at the gate and pick out random people walking on the street and say, come, come, we want to test you. He said, no, that's foolish. In the same way, Allah tests those who have said their shahada and entered the fold into Islam. You're not in the school. How can you expect tests? That's why Allah says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد Don't ever let it deceive you that the disbelievers are not being tested on earth. Don't let it. They're not even in the college. What test are they going to get? They're not in the school. You can only write the exam when you've enrolled for it, right? You haven't even enrolled. Don't expect them to be tested. Allah says, don't let it deceive you. The fact that they've got everything. We gave them the dunya. The akhirah is not theirs. It's yours. It's a verse towards the end of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the end of Ali Imran, They will enjoy for a little while. Let them have it. Some of them are really good in character, conduct. Allah says, in the dunya, we gave them whatever we thought they deserved. In the akhirah, they never even believed in the akhirah. They didn't even believe. Subhanallah, we believe. So Allah says, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَىٰ Then Allah says, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَىٰ Indeed, soon Allah will give you so much. Until you are happy. You know that fa, some people translate it as so you are happy. Fa in the Arabic language has many translations. Even the wow, it's not only and, it has many meanings. And one of these is until, lil ghaya. Allah will give you and continue to give you until a point that you are very, very delighted and happy. Allah will give you. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَىٰ then Allah is reminding the Prophet ﷺ of the favors of Allah upon him. But the lesson is for all of us. <laughs> Did we not give you that comfort, that security, that dwelling, that living when you were an orphan? He was an orphan. He was born. His father predeceased him wasallam. <laughs> Yet he was the most loved by Allah. He lost his mother at a young age, yet he was the most loved by Allah. You've lost your parents. It's no sign that Allah doesn't love you. He loves you. you. Might have lost one or two. Allah loves you. You might lose someone else. Allah loves you. So Allah says, weren't you an orphan? And look what we did for you. We gave you that protection, that comfort, that sustenance, that dwelling, and so on. We took care of you, basically. Then Allah says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى The people of Makkah, what were they doing? They were engaged in ignorance. Allah says, you were amongst those who were totally astray. You were searching for that guidance and we guided you. Allah knew, didn't I say at the beginning, that he was going to the cave in order to search for something. Allah gave it to him. Amazing. And Allah says, and the people of Makkah, what did they have? They didn't have much in terms of wealth. 
When you didn't have much, we made you independent. There came a time when the Muslims were so wealthy. Allah gave them. So if you are going through struggles, remember Allah will give you. Bear patience. Remain steadfast. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقَهَرُ Now there are two factors mentioned in, this, in this, these verses, this surah. So Allah is now advising us, as for the orphan, don't be harsh on the orphan. Look after the orphans. أَنَا وَكَافِلُ الْيَتِيمِ كَهَاتَيْنِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Myself and the one who takes care of the orphans will be like these two fingers in Jannah together. Because he was an orphan. You look, you look after the orphans, for you is paradise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرُ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ Allah says, the one who comes asking you for anything, don't rebuke him, don't disrespect him, and don't abuse him. When someone comes to ask you for anything, firstly, thank Allah they came to you. If you can, help, help. Allah will help you. If you cannot help, release them with utmost respect. That's a test for you. You say, brother... May Allah reward you. May Allah give you. May Allah open your doors. May Allah create ease for you. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you something. But I ask Allah to open your doors. And you walk away. Wasn't that respectful? But you say, ah, you. How can you be asking me? Look at your body. Aren't you ashamed? You've got, you've got a healthy body. Why don't you find a job? Uncle, give me the job. Subhanallah. I just asked you for five rands. Allah was watching, you could have said, even that much was okay, although it's not so respectful, but it's not demeaning either. But don't demean someone. You know why? Because Allah says, we will provide. We brought them to you to test you, not about them. When a beggar comes to you, it's not about him, it's about you. When a street kid begs, when someone at the traffic light begs, it's not about them, it's about you. They may be criminals, we know, sometimes. But... You need to be respectful, criminal or not. Be respectful. I remember there was an armed robbery at someone's house in the year 2000. And the old lady in the house, these armed robbers came in with guns. And she kept saying, brother, say subhanallah. <laughs> brother, say subhanallah. And I'm thinking, how innocent is this old lady? She said, if they were going to kill me, I was going to go. I'm thinking, imagine this generation, the previous generation, how we think is pretty different. Because they've seen it all, ready to go. May Allah grant us ease. How, how much of respect is that brother say, subhanallah? <laughs> Come on. And with us, when someone is crossing the street, check, he's a thief. I know he's a thief. On what grounds are you saying that? You can protect yourself, no harm. You must protect yourself. You must make sure that you have actually got your gate locked perhaps and whatever else, normal security in this country, for example, or in your locality, and respectfully deal with the person if you need to deal with them. Because you never know who on earth that is. It could be someone very close to Allah. I've seen in one of the Middle Eastern countries, a guy who used to be at a parking lot looking after vehicles. You know, you get a little tip every time you stand there and so on. And it was Ramadan and he was reading Quran. And someone heard this melodious voice. And they saw this brother from Uganda. And he's reading Quran. And they took a short video of it. And they posted it on YouTube. And it went viral. Subhanallah. Do you know what happened to that young man? They made him an imam in one of the masjids. Look at the izza that Allah gives you when people think this man, Allah has forsaken him. Look at this. Never, never. Allah's about to open your door. It starts off like that. I know one of the wealthiest people where I come from years back, he started selling vegetables from the vegetable market in a wheelbarrow. He became a multi-millionaire a few years later. That was Allah. You didn't give up, right? You started. You went on. And you kept on going. 
This is Allah telling you, Ma rabbuka wa ma qala. Allah is not upset with you, He's not forsaken you. If your troubles and your struggles might continue, because that's what life is all about. You will struggle and continue, but you must enjoy it and keep going. Is Allah not with you? Are you not fulfilling your salah? Are you not able to give charity? Are you not eating? Are you not clothed? Are you not okay? We have power cuts in this part of the world. Hang on, hang on, come to my part of the world. Then you'll know what's a power cut. Subhanallah. <laughs> it's a fact. But you enjoy it. When we were young, and the first time we started witnessing these power cuts, we used to stop everything we're doing, and we used to get a bit depressed. Now, you're giving a speech, the lights go, you keep on going. Nothing stops. It's like, you know, normal. Subhanallah. That's a gift of Allah. It's all about how you look at it. If you want to look at a small bee as a threat, you'll call it a terrorist. And if you want to look at it, this thing can provide honey. Let's try and check how best we can extract that honey. It's going to become a source of goodness for you, man. Subhanallah. It's all about perspective. How do you look at things? Not everything is negative. For a mu'min, it's always good. And that's why I chose to speak about this surah because for me it brings about a lot of comfort allah will give you soon he will give you if not in the dunya in the akhirah wallahi he's not going to let you down you're a believer you haven't given up allah will never give up don't give up no but i got a lot of problems you're not the only one we all have a lot of problems it's just that some people don't talk about it it's a fact but i have a problem my income all our incomes are affected but I have a problem at home. At home, we all have some problem. But I have an issue. We all have issues. But in the community, there's, we all have communities where there's a bit of an issue. It's okay. That's life. Allah says, we're going to test you. And guess what? When you have many, many questions in your exam paper, you need to be excited because the more difficult the exam, the greater the certificate. You need to know that. You get primary school, you get matric. After that, you go to do your degree and then you go beyond, beyond, and then you get your PhD and what else? It becomes more and more difficult. Have you ever seen these big university exams where they start off by saying, what's one plus one? <laughs> they can't. They know that's a minor thing. You, that you're supposed to have been tested about it long back. Now it's going to become more difficult. More, this question, you've got to read it. You've got to understand it. You've got to apply your mind. You start sweating. Then you start checking then you make dua and then what happens you start answering it slowly but surely and then the two hours that you have to respond to it are almost over and you say bismillah tawakkal to allah put your pen down and hand the paper and say la ilaha illallah <laughs> that's life it, it really that shows you what our life is all about it will be a test one after the other after another after a third you might fail some of them but in the eyes of allah you must remember one thing your iman must always become stronger and stronger. Your faith, your conviction, you must know that Allah will not let you down. That's the point that I want to drive home today. So here we have one beautiful day extra of the month of Ramadan. I've spoken for 30 minutes and I think uh, I, I, I want to end by saying, let's make dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And let's make dua for our brothers and sisters in all other countries, there are so many suffering across the globe. And there is a lot that's happening. And I promise you, don't underestimate dua, supplication. But together with that, let us as an ummah change. Change in two ways. Our relationship with Allah needs to become better. I promise you, the Quran tells you that you want to start solving problems of the ummah. The individuals need to start rectifying themselves. You become solid, pure mu'min. Then you can contribute towards solving problems. Otherwise, you're going to sit on TikTok. You're going to sit on Instagram. You're going to sit on Twitter tweeting. And you're going to think, I just freed Palestine. Why? I tweeted 30 tweets. Palestine is free. <laughs> That's what they think. Really. Someone says, I made a video. Well, the whole world has make, been making videos for the last 70 years. If anything, the matter is getting worse. So as much as it is important to conscientize the globe, but that's not a solution to the problem we have. The solution is way deeper. I, I said we develop our relationship with Allah. And secondly, 
Let's learn to respect each other because we have little Palestines all over the show. Every masjid has its little Palestine because there's a war going on with two, three parties among the musallis and the others and the committees and whatever else. We're fighting each other. We hate each other. We don't want to talk to each other within our own families. And we want to solve the problems of the whole ummah when you and your brother are not speaking for 20 years. Come on, come on. Wipe that out. These minor issues, they are the obstacle. Clean them, then you'll see what will happen when we all connect up. And then you're going to see the solution to the ummah. Do we really need an, an enemy to destroy us when we ourselves are our own worst enemies inside the circle of those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. We've divided ourselves so much and there will be differences. We need to be mature enough to respect each other with the differences. That's when we will solve the matter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Too much is happening and too many people have too many ideas for too many solutions and none of them have worked yet. So the only way to solve it is to go back to what the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used and the teachings of Allah and His Messenger. May Allah forgive all of us. Really, we need to cry tonight. Seek forgiveness of Allah. We need to cleanse our hearts, make dua for ourselves, for the marhumin, for those who are sick and ill, make dua for the, for, like I said, for the third of the haramain, and make dua for all those who are struggling and suffering across the globe. We are so fortunate to be sitting in this masjid in such a beautiful way. We have cozy jackets and lovely clothing. There are people, our brothers and sisters, who are closer to Allah than us, and they have very, very little compared to us. Do we reach out to them? Do we pray for them? Oh Allah, you know those we don't know. Help them, create ease for them. That dua you're going to make will help you because the angels make dua for a person who's making dua for others. May Allah grant us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha. wa natubu ilaha. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.